Hello and uh, welcome to our World Cup build up. I'm Gav and that's Kev and this is show number two. Our first one looked at groups A, B, C, and D. This one looks, of course, at E, F, G, and H. Kev, how are you? I'm good, yeah, good. Yeah. Not too yeah. bad, yeah. Just excited to get cracking now. Yeah, so um, we're recording this on two, day, two days before the World Cup. This will go out tomorrow, Saturday. And then, of course, the World Cup starts on Sunday night. There's all sorts going on with the World Cup now. Um, there's no drink allowed anywhere, and all of it, it's just it's kind of what you expected to happen when when this World Cup was on its way. But it's starting to happen now, which is a bit mad. But we're gonna fly through these groups. We're gonna look at each team very quickly. We're gonna pick two teams to come out of each group, um, and then we're gonna move on, get these four out of the way, not take up too much of your time. Something for you to watch quickly before the World Cup starts, and we start with Group E. Kev, Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It is, but I don't expect any real surprises. Um, Japan have a few decent players. There's a young kid uh, at Brighton that signed this year. Uh, the, he's playing on the left wing. Oh, his name is Casey. He's M- Makuda or something like that. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But Japan have a couple of decent players. Taki, we know about. But you fully expect Spain and Germany to dominate this group. And it wouldn't surprise me if you get a top goal scorer coming out of this group as well. Um, You could get someone rack up goals in this. Um, Spain, Germany is going to be, that'll be the case of who decides who goes where in the group, top and second. Germany aren't as bad as what people think. Um, Mm. They'll miss Timo Werner, obviously. Uh, Didn't set the world alight at Chelsea, but. He's found he's hit the ground running back in Germany, and he's normally on form for the national team, but he's out. Other than that, they've got a really well-rounded squad. Uh, Spain again. You've got Rodri holding the middle of the park with Pedri on one side, Gavi on the other side. They really, can hold yeah. the ball. Yeah, it's a really yeah. um, interesting midfield. Spain have is one you yeah. really want to watch in this World Cup. It could be one thing with the heat that's over there. I looked on my phone tonight just to see what the temperatures like over there at seven o'clock for the evening kickoff. It was thirty-one degrees Celsius in Doha, and a real feel of thirty-five. Mm. So sides who can manage the ball and keep the ball for long periods will do well. Yeah. You know, if you you don't want to be chasing mm. the ball in this in this weather, even they're hosting it in the winter, it's still hot. Mm. So I think Spain will probably top the group. Germany finish second. And the, Japan would be there. They'd be a good watch. They'd be there for a good time, but they won't be there for a long time. Okay. Um. Just, I I agree with you. I think it's hard to look beyond Spain and Germany. You know, I've seen stuff about Germany saying, "Oh, it's the weakest German squad you've seen in the world." But every time Germany turn up at a competition, probably bar, you probably count on one hand when they've had a bad one. Um. Mm. They usually do quite well. But I agree on the on the top two: Spain, Germany, whatever way you want to throw it, because it probably will come down to that game between the two of them. Do you see either of them two challenging, though, for the World Cup as it goes on? I think Spain could grow into it. If you're going to be picking a European side to be a dark horse in this, um, I think Spain could be the one. Um, the Anzu Fati as well. Ferran Torres, good player. Um, the likes of Marcus Llorente at Atletico Madrid won't get into this side mm. unless he plays at fullback, you know, unless he plays covering Carvajal. So they've... They've got an awful lot about them, and they've um, they're a side that came through the Olympics together as well. They're a young side, and Luis Enrique is probably one of the best managers at the tournament. Mm. I wouldn't, if they went on to win it, it wouldn't be a massive, humongous shock, you know. But nobody's talking about them, which probably suits them. Yeah, we'd have to see. I think I think just on the, I I do see Spain and, and Germany going through. Um, I don't really see Costa Rica and Japan worrying them too no. much. You might get, you might get, if someone grabs a point off someone, and then Germany and Spain go into that game against each other, going, "Oh, we probably need to win this now." You know, might get down to that. But I think overall, I think it's fair to say that them two will come through the group. Yeah. Um, just moving on to Group F. Um, so in Group F, Belgium, Canada, Morocco, Croatia. Very interesting group, you know. Canada are rank outsiders, but they've a couple of decent players that play for them. Um, you look at Morocco and you have got um, you've Zayech, you've Akimi, haven't you? You've yeah. you know you've a couple. You've, they've a few real standouts. Croatia, 
you know, they're still they still have Modric bopping around the place. Um Belgium I still think they flatter to deceive a little bit when it comes yeah. to when it comes to tournaments. But the group stage on their own here, um, do the two European sides look again to dominate this? They should do. Um Canada will get <coughs> I, I hope for Matt to say to Canada get a goal. Yeah. Whenever I've talked to Matt about this, all Matt has always said is just get a goal. They couldn't get a goal in '86, but mm. this time you got Jonathan David up front. You've got um, Alfonso Davies, and there's another player that plays for in the for Bruges called Lavin. Yeah, uh, really good striker apparently. Yeah, and he'd be one to watch for the for this group. They sh- they could actually get something off Morocco. Morocco, decent side. Roman Saiz is probably their one defender that you know. Um, Bufal, another one. Hakimi in Missouri, you know. The goalkeeper is at Seville, Bono. Uh, yeah. A really good keeper. But, yeah, look, you expect Belgium and Croatia to come through. Croatia have an ageing midfield. You still like have Modric at 38 plus VAT. Uh, Brozovic is still in there as well, you know. These guys aren't getting it, getting any younger. They'll come through this group, all right, but I don't think they'll be going too much further. Do um, the, you know, I don't. Canada have a couple of good players, all right, but you, you know, they're still ranked outsiders. But but just on Morocco, do Morocco look to try take a point off Belgium and Croatia somewhere? How Belgium and Croatia trip each other up, playing against each other, and and then take then they can take advantage because, all right, Morocco haven't got massive pedigree in the World Cup, but with those players that were playing for them, they probably look and go, you know what? Just if there's one slip from Belgium or Croatia, we need to capitalise on it. Yeah, I mean you got to look. It's Belgium you got to look at because outside of Kevin De Bruyne, they have an awful lot of has been who never, you know, who haven't done anything. The likes of Eden Hazard hasn't done anything for a long time. Lukaku hasn't done anything in ages. So they still got Vertonghen and all the world at the back. Mm. <laughs> On paper, you'd fancy Belgium strongly to come out of the group, but in this heat, with the pressure of the time, this is probably Martinez's last tournament. This is, yeah. it, this is it for him. So, look, you sh- they should get out of the group. If De Bruyne can find any kind of form, they will. But it, if anyone's got to slip up, I think it would be Belgium over Croatia. Okay. I think if anyone's got to drop anything, it, Belgium could be the one who dropped one there. Okay, but I, I'll, I'll put you on the spot. The two no. teams come out of that. Belgium and Croatia. Yeah, Be- Belgium and Cro- Croatia on top of the group. Belgium second. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> um, let me see. What's next? What's next? I'm flying through this because I kind of want a little talk about a few predictions at the end there as well. Um, group G. Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. That feels to me like, I'm going to be honest, that feels to me like Brazil and any of those other three could end up with them. This is a group that will keep Brazil honest. And it's probably what they need in a tournament to get them going. You know, the last thing they'd want to be in is a soft group. Um, They... they, they're probably the tournament favourites. They're ranked number one in the world. Um, they should top this group and top a group top this group well, but they need to keep the likes of Neymar fit. Uh, Vinicius Junior, they're going to be relying on and Rodrigo at Real Madrid. They'll be relying on him a fair bit. They're a really well rounded side. They really are. Um, it is just going to be a case of down to w- which one of the other three. And I look at Serbia. You have Mitrovic up front with uh, Vlahovic. Uh, Jovic is there as well. Yeah. T- Tadic and Kostic, you know, two wide players who love putting crosses in. Milinkovic, Savic in the middle of the park. They're a brute of a team. They're a, they're a big, solid, proper, old-fashioned, hate the term Yugoslav, but from that Balkan region's technically good players, they've always produced. And they're... They're going to be one of those sides that are up near the top of the Who Needs Them club. They could really hurt you in a lot of ways, uh, especially aerially. And a lot of sides don't like the physical nature. And they'll play two up front. They'll play Mitrovic and Vlahovic up front. Like. Yeah. And they won't play. They won't mind playing 4 4 2. This is probably, the group, this is probably the group that's excited me the most in doing yeah. this. Because when I look at it, I always love a group where right, you're always going to get one that stands out, i.e., Brazil. 
you know, when you look at all the players they have. But then you think to yourself, Serbia, big, strong, you know, really good fucking players. Don't get me wrong. It's just yeah. that when you look at physically the how good they are, you know, when you think about Mitrovic does, Milinkovic, Savage does, Vlahovic does, you know, you think of all these players, you think, wow, they're not going to get pushed around, but they're no. good fucking footballers. Switzerland are wily outside, um, you know, technically good as well. Always seem to do well, get themselves yeah. out of groups and see where they go. And Cameroon are a bit, Cameroon for me, torn up and can probably look at that group and go, yeah, we're probably fourth favourites. But yeah. again, they're probably looking at them going, themselves going, well, if Switzerland and Serbia trip here and we step in and get a win somewhere, because one win can and One win changes everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a really, really um it's a really I think it's an intriguing group. But their I, manager I, their manager is Rigobert Song. Yeah. For Cameroon. So yeah. Yeah. Link there, Abu, but yeah, Abu Bakar is the one who's turned around and says he doesn't rate Salah yeah. <laughs> for whatever reason. And Chupa Moting up front as well. Yeah. Onana is their goalkeeper. He's yeah. an Inter Milan, former yeah. IX goalkeeper. There's a lot. Of, you said about Switzerland, you know, Sharon Akanji at the back, you know, good, Granite Jacka, Okafor, we're linked with. Mm. Um, Shakiri, we know about. This is, a pro- this is a proper test for Brazil. You know, they should top the group, but they'll probably be the better for it because they'll have to rotate their squad and give everyone minutes and everyone's going to have to contribute. So that Brazil will probably benefit in the long run from this group. I, I really want to know what your two is on this group. Brazil and Serbia. Oh, I'm the same. I'm yeah, the same. And, and you know something? I think that's what will happen, but I actually hope that's what happened. Serbia to me are the sort of team where, and you say it all the time, I don't really want part of them, they mm. come across to me as something like that. Yeah. You know, at a tournament, they're going to go in there, they're going to give it everything, and they have, if you take them lightly, they can hurt you. You yeah. know, the sort of way. Now, the only worry you might have against them is maybe defensively, where, you know, teams can get at them, but if if they if they can get the likes of them midfield and, and central midfield, and especially if you've, the forwards they have are really really good if you can get them walking and taking chances I think it's one of those where they they could sneak into the last 16 you know and then you're kind of going fuck they're in a quarter final here and then yeah. anything can happen you know um, a bit for me like Russia um, four years yeah. ago or, or South, uh, South Korea South was Korea. 2002 now yeah. in fairness we were talking about that the other night and the decision they get against Spain is, is a bit mental but <laughs> but do you know the sort of way where it just, well, you- just to get under but the radar and even, next to all the confidence grows. Yeah, you go back even further than that. Poland getting to semi-finals, Bulgaria. You know, there's always one nation who are capable. Croatia got to a final, you know. It's like, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that a Serbia goes deep into this competition. Mm. And they have the quality. This is the thing. And they have form. They have players in form at the right time. Mitrovic is having the season of his life. So they'll be definitely they'll be one of the one that Brazil Serbia game will definitely be one you'd want to you'd want to sit down and watch. You go out of your way to sit down and watch that if you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know what? Um it's I just think I just think it's such an it's such an easy group uh, an easy group to watch. I think it's gonna be such an it, I don't know what it is. It's just for me. It's just one of those where I go, that one's that one's gonna enjoy me. I'm gonna enjoy that if I watch it now because I'm <laughs> terrible in tournament football for going and watching them. Honest to God, like yeah, whatever about the day games. I think the evening games would be a lot easier to watch. Well, I, I'm just one of those Kev, that if it's there, I'll watch it, and if it's not, I, I, you know, I'm not really. It's not something that I just go and do, and and. Yeah, no. Uh, maybe maybe it's because I'm getting older. I just have more <laughs> fucking things on, to be perfectly honest with you. That's, that's fair. But, um, yeah, look, it's, it's one of those. Um, let's move on to the last group, because I have a little thing that's that good. you gave me earlier, a little uh, predictor thing lined up here, so we, we go and have a look at it in a minute. Right? I'm just dying to get to it, I'm being honest with you. <laughs> uh, but last, last but not least is uh, Group H. Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, Korea Republic. And I'm going to hold my hands up straight away, Kevin. I love world football now. But just give me more of Darwin Nunes and um, we'll see where it goes from there, honestly. i tell you what, man. This is this for me is a group of death. Um, anything could happen in this. I've got a feeling that Portugal explode I, or implode. 
I think okay. The re- I don't think I think the relationship between Bruno Fernandez and Cristiano Ronaldo is not right. Something's definitely not right there. They don't play well together anyway. We know that. We've seen that play for Manchester United. Portugal's manager will not drop Cristiano Ronaldo when they need to. They're a better side without him in it. They're a better side with Joao Felix up front. But I don't think he will. I've I've a feeling that this Portuguese side is going to massively implode. Okay. And you don't want to be in this group. Jota's a huge miss for them, I think, as well. Jota's a miss, but having, <coughs> Raphael, having Raphael lay out to play on the left-hand side of a front three, the guy's six foot two, and he's in great form at the minute for his club. So AC it's Milan not a massive... Well. Yeah, he's at AC Milan, yeah. And it's not a huge drop-off in quality. I think this kid is going to be a special player. But it's... You've got Pepe at the back. They're... I just think Ronaldo's a problem. You know, that interview, those combined interviews didn't help him. And it, it definitely didn't sit well with uh, Bruno Fernandes when he walked into that dressing room. Everyone saw the video and the Portuguese media team have come out and made up some kind of excuse that he'd lost his bag or something. That's rubbish. There is friction there. And they're lucky enough at the minute that they've got time to iron it out. But... If there's a team in this tournament that will that are capable of doing what the Netherlands used to do years ago, I think it's Portugal. And okay. this is definitely the group you don't want to be messing about with. Okay. Because the other three sides are really good. Ghana are... After bringing in two players, that, um, one is Terry Glamty from Brighton, and the other one is Inaki Williams at Bilbao. And they've both... They're both declared for, for Ghana and they're both going to the World Cup. They add quality and pace. And in Anaki Williams, they've got a forward who can get goals. You've also got the two IU brothers and Thomas Partey in the in that Ghana side as well. I think they're they're going to be one of those, they're going to be a good side to watch. Um Uruguay. Uruguay are a really well balanced side. You could have a case. I mean, you've got the old stagers in their last tournament in Suarez and Cavani. Godin is another one in Muslera, the goalkeeper. This will be their last tournament. But behind them, you've got Arujo at Barcelona, starting centre-back. Valverde at Real Madrid. Darwin Nunes, we know about. Facundo Torres and Facundo Pas- Palestieri. They're two young, talented wingers. They're, I fancy them to top this group. I really do. I just think they've got a, they've got so much youth and experience in that side that they can definitely get two wins and a draw out of this. Okay. And in the bottom group, then you've got Korea with um, Hyun Min Son. Kim Min Jae is uh, one player to watch out for in this group. He's a centre back for South Korea, but he's also a centre back for Napoli. Yeah, he's excellent. He is a brilliant centre back. He mm. really, really is. Excellent. And you got Huang Hee Chan at Wolves as well, who mm. in this setup for Korea, with with Son, you've got pace to burn. It's um, very, it's, I, like you say, this could be a there's group quality of in this group. There's quality in this group all over the place. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's hard to look. I think I think Uruguay just know how to do it. Yeah, and I think the re- Ghana and and um, Korea Republic or South Korea, whatever you want to call it, they're up against it because I think Portugal have enough experience there to get them through, and I think Uruguay are like proper have just just loads of they're just streetwise, they're so streetwise, yeah, and they'll yeah. find a way. You know, well, we think- saw it with Suarez at the last World Cup, and he just like volleyed the ball out, you know, as if he was going trying out for the Olympic volleyball team. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't care. Yeah. Winner, they don't care how they win. It'll yeah. be win at all costs. But uh, like but I, I said about, like I said about the last group there, um, and it's one I really, really want to watch, right, in, um, with Switzerland, Serbia, Cameroon. This one here, I'm watching it for Darwin Nunes, I'm being honest with you, because yeah, I just yeah. think he's mayhem. But again, this one, the lad, they probably saved the best two groups for last for me. In 100%. the intrigue, in it, which way will it go? Because a lot of groups we've gone through where we go, them and them, them and them. Yeah. And you might get the odd shock somewhere. But this one here, you know, Ghana will fancy their chances. Like you said, South Korea won't lie down for anyone. 
you know, no. and like you said, they've enough quality that if you if you don't take them lightly, they'll hurt you. That's what a walk was about. If you don't, if you don't take someone seriously, you can get hurt. Um, but we're gonna have to pick two, and we go. We're gonna go through. We're gonna go through a predictor really quickly here in a minute. But yeah, go on. Um, I hand on heart, uh, <laughs> Uruguay and Ghana. I definitely think there's something's not right in that Portugal setup. Okay. But look, if I was a betting man, I would say Uruguay top the group and Portugal second. If I was putting putting a bet on it, would be Uruguay with Portugal. But if Ghana come out of this group, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I think they're probably the best of the African sides now that Sadio Mane is missing from Senegal. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um. Get your thinking cap on, though. <laughs> Here we go. Because I want to see who we think could win this. All right. So let me mm. just let me just sort something out here now. We'll we'll. Uh... So let's see. Um. Predictor. All right. Right. Okay, so let me go through this. So let's let's predict them in real time. Yep. Group A, I want the winner and a runner-up place. Okay, uh, Netherlands and Ecuador. Okay, Group B, um, England and you said Wales. I said I Wales. Said U- I said USA. Okay, but... we go with USA. We're gonna, we're gonna. Drop this on your dog, Kevin. Said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Group C. Um, um, yeah, Argentina and Poland. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that as well. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. happy with that as well. Uh, group D. Denmark, top the group. Well, wow. with France coming second. Okay. I think group... France are carrying a few too many injuries going into this. Okay. Group E. Spain and Germany. Spain won. Germany too. Yeah. Group F, one of the interesting ones. Croatia, Belgium. I was going to say the exact same. Yeah. We've got Group G, which would be Brazil. And you think Serbia? I think Serbia, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then the last one, Group H. Uh, Uruguay, I think, will win it. Who do you think? I think Portugal come over. Yeah, go on. Go with Portugal because that's just... It is a toss-up. It genuinely is a toss-up. Okay. But this so, is where it gets fun. Netherlands against USA? Yeah. Netherlands beat US. Okay. But now, that's a monster. That's a monster because you think France aren't going to win their group? No. So who comes out with this one? I think Argentina beat France. Okay. France go home early. England v Ecuador? England will beat Ecuador. Okay. Denmark v Poland. Denmark will be Poland. Okay. Um, Spain will be Belgium. Spain will be Belgium. Yeah. Brazil will be be Portugal. Portugal. Germany will be Croatia. Oh, do you think so? Yeah. They've just got too much. They've got too much in the middle of the park. I think with Kimmich (coughs) and Goretzka in the middle of the park, they've, they've probably got enough. Okay. Be Croatia, I think. Fair enough. Um, but that'll be an animal of a game, that last one. Oh, well. No, no, no. <laughs> now, I'm not, listen, for me, I'm woke up, give, take or leave it because of what's everything that's going on around it, right? It's in December, it just doesn't suit me. But my God, Uruguay, Serbia, I'm absolutely oh. all over because I just think that is just a clash of everything there's, going on. Everything. Red card, red card, oh, there's everything all over going on there. Everything, absolutely everything. Like um, I think probably Serbia. Uh, I just think they've got enough experience and the power up front to probably edge it out. I just edge think they have point? a bit too much. Yeah, I think they have a bit. They have a bit too much. Okay. In the middle of the park, I think oh. they'd win it. They'd win it in the middle of the pitch. Okay. I, I right. We go there, but I would have went Uruguay. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be put it out. No, there. I want Darwin to come home. See. Quarterfinals: <laughs> Holland, Argentina. Argentina. Spain, Brazil. That's a tough one. Um, See, I'm in the quarterfinals now, so teams teams are going to... 
for me, it's good the way it gets cagey, you see. And I think Cage in his wins at times. Yeah. Um, I think probably Brazil. Mm -hmm. But it would be a very tight game. Okay. England, Denmark. Um, I think England win that. I think England would win that. Okay. I think England would win that. And Germany, Serbia. I think that'd be the end of the road for Serbia. I think so, yeah. I think Germany would have enough there as well, yeah. Okay. I think Germany there. Argentina, Brazil in the semi final. That's right. I think Argentina beat them. Okay. England, Germany. Germany beat them. Okay. But I think England's World Cup depends on whether France topped their group or not. Okay. If France, if France topped their group, they'll hammer England because Mbappe will just rip that back four apart. But Denmark, if Denmark topped their group, England probably have, it's, that, it's just that kind of Premier League game. Yeah. And I think England would have enough quality to beat them. Third and four place playoff between Brazil and England. Uh, Brazil. And the final. Argentina. Argentina. I don't know what happens when we submit this, I'm being honest with you. No, no, really it just it literally. Oh, gives you a nice little thing there. This gives you a nice little wall chart. Mm, so there we go. Let's scroll up there and we can see exactly what it is. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. Who done that one? Being Sports. That's a good one. Being that's sports. a really it's good It's a very one. good one. It's yeah. very user friendly as well. Yeah, it's really good. So, it so we really have good. a final between Germany and Argentina to be won by Argentina. And that's our prediction. Well, Kev, so I'm going to fucking blame Mine. on Kev. <laughs> um, but look. It's it's a uh, it's gonna it's if you get to see it, I think it's gonna be on the pitch I think it could be a good World Cup off the pitch I think it's gonna be an absolute unmitigated disaster. Yeah. Um. But the biggest worry for me in the World Cup, to all told, is the atmosphere of the grounds. Mm. When you look at, it, I mean, I was talking to someone earlier on, and we just said, "What do you remember the 2010 World Cup? First thing that comes to your head from South Africa Vuvuzelas. is Vuvuzelas, the atmosphere in the grounds." USA 94, um, the Ger Germany was probably the best held World Cup mm. ever, to be honest. Even in Russia, the atmosphere in the grounds is really good. Yeah. I don't see that many traveling fans going to Qatar to create this atmosphere in the grounds. And that's where I think this World Cup falls down. Yeah. I think on the pitch, there's enough. We've there's enough in them groups where side. you go, it's really interesting. But I think the, yeah. the conditions... Um and the whole infrastructure around this World Cup that it just doesn't I I don't know it's just for me it just doesn't sit right and yeah. it probably is one where you kind of go oh do you know what there's just there's just been so much said around it now in, in the lead to it that if you are kind of on the fence whether to watch a game or not you go oh, I'm not bothered I'll do something else you know sort of way but yeah. on the pitch it could it could be a good one but look that's been our preview our second part um two parts to be out right on top of each other the day before the World Cup for you to go and watch and and stuff like that and you can check out that predictor as well on being sport if you want to do your own um kev it's been an absolute pleasure um really enjoyed it we will have these out and during the world cup we will have some watch alongs we will have nightly shows ho hopefully nightly shows where we look at the day and at the world cup and stuff like that we bring some liverpool things as well so as much as we possibly can quizzes drafts any random chats wherever we can find during the um, month where the World Cup is on and we will do it. That has been the LSE Day Trippers, your World Cup preview. Talk to you in a bit. Over and out.